Yesterday, I was told to go and pick up a cooler from a lab called Genutech. Dude. Psych is one of my favorite television shows of all time. I still pretty much watch it every day. And the effect that we're going to create today from Psych is this highlighting of the clue. Now, over the seasons, this technique evolved and had some variations. But at its core, it's a simple way to engage us, the audience, into Sean's thought process by highlighting the clue, doing some flashbacks, very interesting technique, and very easy to do inside of DaVinci Resolve. All right, here we are in DaVinci Resolve. Now, as of the making of this video, I'm actually using DaVinci Resolve 18.5 Beta, and this is the studio version. But I assure you, everything we're gonna do right now can be done in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. I'm not using any of the particular plugins or GPU acceleration. All right, so what I've got here in my media pool, if you will, I've got the clip I wanna use and couple of sound effects that'll help sell this. And so the first thing I want to do is actually find the section of footage I want to use for this clip. Um, and so here, maybe we come out, uh, maybe right there, I'll set an out point and get the pan in. So maybe about right there. And so what we're wanting to do on this clip is when it pans into the object, this is going to be our area of focus. We're going to go ahead and highlight this logo that's down here. So the R52, I want to light them up one at a time, darken the rest of the image so that it stands out. And it's pretty easy to do. So got my in and out points. What I'm actually going to do to make my life a little easier is I'm going to drag this over to the media pool and just create it as a sub clip. And, and the reason I do this is so I can use it um, kind of however I want. But also when I bring it into Fusion, my um, frame count will start at zero instead of, you know, frame... 800 or 900 or wherever I would happen to be over here. So this sub clip, let's play it through. Got plenty of duration to, to freeze on them, pan in, looks good. All right, so let's take this down into our timeline. What's our duration of this clip? Five seconds, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shorten this up a little bit to say four seconds. It's more than, more than we'll need. We'll probably do a final trim down of that in the edit, but four seconds gives us plenty of time to highlight. Okay. Here we are, clip selected. Make sure it's got the uh, red ring around it selected and we'll jump into the Fusion tab. Now, if you're new to Fusion, this will be an easy introduction because this is a very easy effect. Again, if you know the tools to use to make this happen, right? And so let's walk through what we want to have happen. We're going to have the camera is going to pan into our object. Once it pans, I want to zoom in. So I want to get the object to be bigger. Right, I want uh, this whole thing to come in like this. So we want a zoom effect. I want to be able to really focus in on that. I want to darken the image. I want everything to sort of darken out so I don't, I'm not looking at it. And then I want to highlight the letters, R, 5, 2. And in this case, I'm going to highlight them one at a time because I want this little sound effect with each letter being being lit up, sort of like zoom, 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 and then zoom into that logo. So with that idea, let's go ahead and do the effects one at a time. So I'm going to reset my view here to 100%. And so the first thing we want to do is when this camera pans in, uh, view, not 100, view fit. Once we sort of land on it, so it looks like we land, get stable. So maybe right about there. So let's say at frame 20, I want to zoom in. So to zoom in, we want to bring in a transform node, which is actually just right here on my toolbar. So I can just grab this, I can drop it in. And on frame 20, I wanna zoom it up. And I want that to take maybe maybe four frames. So we go from the original size to our zoom size in four frames. So at frame 20, I'm going to keyframe over here. I'm gonna keyframe the size and I'm actually gonna keyframe the center X, Y. So keyframe and keyframe. And we're gonna move ahead four frames. So we'll go to frame 24. And now let's just zoom it up. So I want to get it nice and zoomed up. And maybe I lift it up a little bit. Let's see. Let's see what that looks like. So back up. So boop, looks pretty good. Exactly what we want. All right. Zoom taken care of. I also want the image to go dark and sort of be desaturated because I really just want to be able to focus on this logo. And so I'm going to select my transform node here. 
uh, I'm going to rename it. I like to have everything named. So I'm just going to say, uh, I'm just going to call this zoom in, um, zoom in uh, transform. All right, so I know that that's my zoom in effect. While I have it highlighted or selected, I'm going to go ahead and look for a color corrector. So I can hit shift space, brings up the select tool, type CC for color corrector, hit enter. And this color corrector, I want to do the same thing. So at like frame 20 to 24, I'm going to get rid of the saturation and I'm going to bring down probably the gamma. So let's go to frame 20 and we'll highlight gamma or we'll keyframe gamma and saturation. So get that saturation, get it a keyframe. So the little, the little red dot, same thing with gamma. Just make sure we got the little red dot on it. We're good to go. All right. So frame 20 and we go to 24. Not 243 frame 24 we're zoomed in we can just take the saturation all the way to zero and let's bring down that gamma so everything is really dark there we go so something like that so again we kind of play zoom in boom, desaturate dark perfect what's next well we're going to start highlighting the letters so once we've zoomed in make everything dark it's zoomed in now I want to start highlighting so it, starting at like frame 24 right I want to begin highlighting the letters and I want to highlight them one at a time so I want the R and then maybe two frames later the five and two frames later the two so let's do that uh, first thing I want to do and the reason I do it this way the tool we're going to use is a selection wand and that will select everything that's of a similar hue and color uh, adjacent pixels. Let me show you that. Let me just click into to no space here. I'm going to type wand. I'm going to rename the wand and I'm going to call this wand R. And I'm going to put an input into the wand, right? I'm going to put this over in my first viewer. And you can see how, how it works, right? And so if I drag this down and I get it on the letter R, the little R lights up right which is is what I want I want to be able to isolate that R and I can use it as a mask or an input into a, like a background node and use that as the color but if I had done this after the color corrector right so it's in the correct spot we can see that right now like if I zoom in I know that I'm on the letter R and it's lit up correctly but let's say I pull that out and let's say I did that after the color corrector Boop. The wand is going to start selecting all of the, it's going to sort of bleed out through there because we've desaturated the image and, and we've changed it, right? And so this is the other beautiful thing about Resolve is because I'm doing this pipeline, I can pull input from wherever I want. Uh, I'm going to create me a little joint up here, right? So it'll be nice and neat. There we go. All right, so I've got the letter R. I also want the five and the two. So I'm just going to quickly create two more wand nodes. So I'm going to create a wand. I'm going to rename him wand five. I'm going to create one more wand, wand, and I'm going to rename that real quick to wand two. All right. So pretty basic stuff. We'll do the same thing. I'm going to feed the input. Uh, into wand five and an input into wand two. Take the wand five, move him up to our first viewer. Select just the five. Looks good. Same thing for wand two. Select that node, bring it up into our first viewer, and pull this right down on the two. Now, the next thing I want to do is really sort of clean up this selection, right? It's a little jaggedy. So there's some properties I can use to clean up the selection. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to highlight wand R again. I'm going to kind of look at it. And over on the control panel, there's really the range. I've got range and soft edge or uh, range soft edge. And what this will allow me to do is refine that selection and sort of smooth it out a little bit. And so I just want to smooth it out a little bit. That looks pretty good. And since these settings are basically going to be the same for all the letters, I'm going to take the wand click on the little pin here to hold hold it up here. I'll select wand five and the wand five, I'm gonna tie range and soft edge or the soft edge down to wand R, right? And so in the range, I'll just put an equal 
Then I can use this little control here in Pickwick over to the range and same thing here and the Pickwick and boom, just like that. And then the same thing for wand number two real quick. Take that control, tie it to range and tie it to range. So boom, done. All right, so now all of these should have a fairly nice looking selection. Great. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring down a background node and I'm just going to call this uh, logo highlight color. And for right now, it's just going to be white. We're just going to make it sort of glow nice and white. We could change it. Um, right now, I think white's good enough. And so I want to take wand and pop it in there. So when I look at it, it looks basically the same. And I need all of these to feed into a similar background color, but I don't want to duplicate this node. I just want to create an instance of it. So I have one, and if I change the color, it'll change it for all of them. So Command C or Control C to copy, and then to paste is Command Shift V. And I'm going to get rid of the merge node. Click off in space, that way I don't get it. And I'll paste another one. So these create just these instances. I can wire up each individual instance looking good all right so now what we need to be able to do is tie these back into our media out right because we want these to come back in merge into our system if you will so we can start to see them so if i take the wand r and i drag it down we'll see that it lights up which is like oh that's good but i need the rest of these and i want to merge them in such a way that i can control when they're coming on and when they're when they're not available, right? Um, now, since I'm using 18.5 beta, I can actually do this with a multi-merge node, but you may not have the, the beta version, so I'm just gonna do this with regular merges um, just to keep it easy, right? So I'm gonna delete that merge, and instead, I'm gonna start merging from top to bottom. So I'm gonna take R, or, and or, excuse me, I'm gonna take the two and the five, I'm gonna merge those together, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna rename this. I'm gonna call this MRG, five two and then i'm going to take the five and the two because the output of this node here would actually be the five and the two together and i'm going to drop that here on the r and so i'll name this mrgr underscore five two so that's saying i'm going to take the r and i'm going to merge the five and two onto it and then lastly that would merge back down here and i'll rename this mrgr five two right so that's the full merge and with a merge node, I can control the blending mode, which controls whether or not we can see it. Boom, boom, boom. Perfect. And what I want is on frame 24, I want the letter R to be visible, right? And so if I control this merge down here on the bottom on frame 24, I can set the blend to one, which is what it's currently at, right? So I've got a blend of one. So I'm going to go ahead and keyframe that back up one frame, so frame 23, and I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna bring that blend all the way down, right? All the way down, it's gone. So when I play, zooms in, boom. But you're saying, well, that's lighting all of them up, which it is, and that's not what we want. So frame 24, while I'm blending this entire node together, I wanna to take this node here and I wanna turn the blend down to zero right and by doing that you can see the five and the two disappear which is what I want I just want the R to be visible at frame 24 but on frame 26 I want the five to be visible all right so I'll bring this blend all the way up keyframe it I'm gonna back up one frame frame 25 and I'm gonna set blend to zero all right and so again if I kind of loop through we can see the R lights up, then the 5, 2. Okay, well now I can move up the stack, if you will, to this merge 5, 2 node, right? And I want to turn off the number 2, right? So at frame 26, we're on. So at 28, right? So at 24 is the R, 26 is the 5, 28 is the 2. So at frame 28, merge 5, 2, set the blend to 1. Frame 27... I'm going to set the blend to zero. And now I've actually got my highlighting effect completely done. 
right? I'm gonna go ahead and just use a single viewer, play this, boom, boom, boom. Beautiful thing, right? Let's, uh, let's just loop this back at say frame 35. And we'll do from, uh, let's just say frame 20 to 35 for playback. Now we can watch, boom, 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 boom. Perfect effect. So after they're all lit up, the next thing I want to do is I want them to glow, right? So I want to add a bit of a glow and I want to resize it so that they get larger, right? So let's work on the glow. So I'll scoot these down, move this over. So on this node here, the output of merge R52 is the foreground, which is the five and the two and the background, which is the R. So from this node, I can just go ahead and add the glow. So shift space to bring up the tool select. We'll just add the standard glow, which looks pretty good. Um, we can start that glow, I guess on frame 24, we turn it on. So the blend mode, we'll keyframe the blend mode at 24, at 23, we can just turn the blend mode off, which wouldn't matter anyway, because uh, this bottom down here is actually controlling it. So we probably don't even need to worry about the keyframe for the blend mode. Um, we'll just bring the blend up to where we want it. We'll just reset, there we go. So it looks pretty good. Maybe change the glow size a little bit, add a little more glow, a little more intensity, maybe. Ooh, not so much. Let's see what that looks like. Not bad. So next is to take that logo and to just resize it. And again, since the way we've put this together, the logo comes out as its own element that we can manipulate, we can just go ahead and take a transform off of our toolbar, bring it down, click it in place, and now when I resize, I can resize that logo all by itself right so it's kind of independent of there so let's just go ahead and click that put it back we'll get to frame 24 that's when we're starting to light things up so 26 28 so let's start at frame 28 we'll resize and reposition this so with my transform selected transform one let's go ahead and keyframe size and center and let's say maybe over the next six frames, we'll change its size. So we'll go to frame 34. We change the size. Let's get a decent size. Let's move that up, reposition it so it comes to where it's in the middle. All right, let's take a look. Pretty good. I think that'll work. Yeah. That looks like a pretty decent effect. That's it. That's all we need to do in Fusion to get this effect. And now I can jump back into my edit. Uh, let's do playback. Make sure I've got some render cache. Let's turn on smart so it'll render real quick. Speed the video up boop, while we render. There we go. All right. And playback. Nice. Nice. Now to really sell this thing is sound effects. And that's going to be the next piece. Just going to quickly grab. So I grab some sound effects. I want to hear each letter. I want to hear a bit of the zoom. I want to hear a little bit of the environment, right? I really want to bring this effect to life. And so this effect I've got here, this is my letter. I think that's perfect. Perfect sound. So let's go find the letter lighting up. So boom, boom. And let's get this effect. Maybe nudge it to a frame. Let's see. Yeah. All right, alt, drag it down three times for each letter. One, two, frame delay. One, two, one, two, frame delay. Play that. Perfect. Not bad, looks pretty good. Uh, might need to move those one frame. All right. Next is the sound of us zooming in. There we go. 
So let's take that. We'll start zooming in. Maybe trim the head of this a little bit. So somewhere in there, start moving. There we go. And that just adds to it, right? So I want to hear that camera pan. I want to now. I want to hear the zoom, right? So we we hear the pan. We hear the letters. I want to hear the zoom. And so I got this last one. Oh yeah, perfect, perfect. And there it is. That's how we recreate my favorite effect from my favorite television show. Let me know in the comments below what's your favorite TV show and what effect would you like to know how to make. I'm really interested. I'm just now really getting into to Fusion and learning how to use it, so always looking for some inspiration. All right, well, that wraps up this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, until next time, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. You you should probably do whatever it is, uh, whatever it is you need to do. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go play with this some more.